Welcome to the today's webinar on overcoming stage fear and building confidence with the renowned trainer Nancy Shah. So I am Ekta Shah, your host for this session. So in a world uh, where uh, effective communication is paramount, mastering stage fear and building confidence are essential skills nowadays. So Nancy is here, is, she is an expert in public speaking and a confidence development, is here to guide us today. So throughout this webinar, Nancy will share the practical insights and on managing stage fear and enhancing self-assurance. Her expertise has empowered countless individuals to thrive on various stage of lives. So let make the most of this opportunity to learn and grow. Without further ado, let's welcome Nancy Shah. Nancy, it's over to you. Hello, everybody. Good afternoon. Thank you so much for joining in on time for this amazing power pack public speaking workshop that we are conducting in association with Ethica Insurance Broking Private Limited. I'm Nancy Shah, and I'm super happy and excited to be here with you all. I can see the chat section. Uh, Ekta, any guesses how many people we have online? We have more than, okay, there are more than 200 people. Yes, there are more than 200 people. Okay, let's do a quick warm up. Okay, you know a little about me already because Ekta has uh, introduced me already with you, but I would like to know about you a little. So uh, let's do one thing quickly. Type your name in the chat box if you are listening to me right now. Everybody, quickly, type the name in the chat box if you are listening to me right now and I'll take your name suitably. Okay, so I have uh, Akhil, Naveen, Mahendra, Vijay Kumar, Chindu, Deepak, uh, okay, Swati, Zakir, uh, okay, Angel, Deepika, Shruti, Ashrai, Kuldeep, okay, we have Raj Shekhar, Manoj, Hi Abhijit, uh, who else is there? Arvind, my goodness, the chat box is, is like pumping like anything with a lot of names. I love this energy and vibe and we need to continue with the same energy and vibe throughout the sessions, okay? So we have planned an amazing, amazing online workshop for you. This is typically a workshop of five sessions. I think you have all got the schedule of every session, what we are going to do and how. And I hope you have got the worksheet also. If not, then please check the chat box. I think uh, Ekta has already shared it with you all through an email. Or otherwise, you can connect with your HR at your company who would be able to help you with it. Uh, please take a printout of a worksheet if possible. Uh, if you have ready with you today, great. Otherwise, you can take it after the session because there are four more sessions and I'm going to be there with you and we are going to learn a lot of things together, okay? Chat box would be our mode of communication. I'll be asking you questions. You'll be responding there and through that, we would be able to learn together. So I don't want the chat box to just be silent, okay? I want some noise there. Okay, I'm still having a couple of names. Okay, Arvind, I've said your name twice. Okay, Anushri, then uh, we have, uh, okay, Abhinash, Monica, we have Shiva. Hi, I'm super happy. I can't take all the names, but I'm really happy. Let's have clap, 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 clap for everybody who is part of the meeting. Ekta, you want to say something? Okay, fine. So I would be sharing my screen and uh, let's begin with this amazing journey of an online public speaking workshop. Before we do anything else, I have a question for you. I'll ask you a question through a screen and you need to read and respond me through that, okay? I have a very simple question for you. What do you think is the population of the world? Any number. Type in a chat and respond, everyone. What do you think is the population of the world currently? What is the population of the world approximately? Okay, okay. One point, okay. 1.4 billion, 7 billion, 7.5 billion. Boli lagre, okay. You can uh, use any number, okay. 7 billion, 8 billion. I think you guys are quite close. That's approximately, not exactly but somewhere around 7.7 .7 or 7.8 billion people. Yes, we are a 
family of 7.8 billion people in this world right now, okay? And the next question that I want to ask you is, what is that one ability that we all 7.7 .7 billion people have? What is that one ability that we all 7.7 .7 billion people have, okay? Uh, good communication, okay? What else? What are the abilities that we all have? What are the abilities that we all have as human beings? Language, not everybody has that. Okay, talking, I wish that everybody could talk, but not everybody has an ability to talk. Okay, who, who okay, eating, ha, huh, I know, okay, eating, drinking, sleeping, walking. These are basic things. I'm not talking about that. Emotions, yes, we all have an ability to feel something. We all have ability to uh, have different types of emotions. Uh, okay, human thinking. We all have an ability. Who said that? That was the right answer. We all have ability to think. In short, if I tell you, we all have ability to think. We all have the ability to feel. And we all have the ability to express. Thinking, feeling, and expressing our thoughts and feelings. These are the abilities we have. Now, tell me one thing. Is it correct? that most of the people, most of the human beings use speech as a mode to express. Do you agree with this? Type why, why, why in the chat box. Type why, 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 why in the chat box if you agree to this. Yes, why, yes, that, that's great. So most of us use the speech as a tool to express. And that's why how we speak is important. But the next question that I want to ask you is, most of the speeches that we have ever listened or delivered are unbearable. Type you, you, you in the chat box if you feel that if you have ever listened to any unbearable speech. Have you listened to any unbearable speech ever? Yeah, you means unbearable, okay? Yes, you have listened to unbearable speeches. Oh my God. I'm not asking when, where and why, okay? I hope that that's not right now. But I'm sure we all would have come across some unbearable speeches, some boring presentations, some boring talks, some boring speeches at some different places. Okay, let me ask you a better question. A better question is, okay, hold on, hold on. A better question is, have you ever delivered and unbearable speeches. Type me, me, me in the chat box. M E me in the chat box. If you have ever delivered an unbearable speeches, जो deliver करने के बाद आपको ऐसा लगा हो कि यार ये क्या कर दिया मैंने, you know? How I have spoiled this. I should not have done this worst speech. This was not a good speech. Have you ever felt that? Oh my God, there are so many people. Okay, if I also type it here, I'll say long me for sure. I have also delivered some unbearable speeches. In fact, not some many unbearable speeches. I was an unbearable speaker for sure when I began my journey. And when you see me right now, when I'm able to speak confidently, when I'm able to speak good, that means I've worked upon it. There's no magic stick, okay? There's no miracle which has happened. It's just a constant practice and preparation and through which you improve upon yourself and become a better speaker. And that's how I developed myself. And based on my experience within these five sessions, I'm going to share with you how you can become a better speaker. I would never say best because best is a myth. Even I don't consider myself as a best speaker, but at least a better speaker, a little better version of who you are or who you have been. Can we do that together? Right? Because when you talk, when you go on stage and speak, when you do public speaking, it's not just about what you speak. There are a lot of other things. Now, tell me one thing. Type in a chat box and tell me why any speech becomes unbearable. Why any speech becomes unbearable? What are the reasons? Why do you find any speech unbearable? Okay, stage fear. Stage fear is one of the reasons. What else? Fillers. There are a lot of fillers which are not required. Lack of confidence. There was no confidence, okay? Uh, it was not suitable for me. Okay, I didn't like it. Okay, la lack of preparation, presentation, language. Okay, topic was not reliable. reliable okay, uh, unable to connect with the listeners. Listeners were not connected. 
ओके कम्युनिकेशन स्किल्स व नॉट गुड यूजर फ्रेंडली नहीं था ओके नॉट एंगेजिंग द ऑडियंस लो कॉन्फिडेंस कॉन्टेंट वॉज नॉट दैट क्लियर एंड गुड इनफ ओके वॉट एल्स ओके पिच वॉकेबलरी दिस दैट ओ माय गॉड यू गाइज नो एवरीथिंग एकता व्हाई यू वी आर डूइंग दिस सेमिनार दिस पीपल ऑलरेडी नो व्हाई एनी स्पीच बिकम्स अनवेलेबल दे हैव सो मेनी पॉइंट्स टू शेयर इन द चैट बॉक्स माय गुडनेस द चैट बॉक्स इज फ्लडिंग लाइक एनीथिंग यस यू ऑल आर करेक्ट एंड आई अग्री विथ यू टोटली बिकॉज दिस इज नॉट ओनली वन रीजन व्हाई एनी स्पीच बिकम्स अनवेलेबल देयर आर मेनी देयर आर मेनी फैक्टर्स टू पावरफुल कम्युनिकेशन एंड दैट्स वेयर our role comes in a picture where we can help you in a better way how you can prepare and present your speeches in a more confident way as i say it's not just about what you talk but also about how you talk it it's not just about what you say but also about how you say it so once again hello 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 i hope you have now got the brief idea of what we are going to do and why we have selected this topic irrespective of your job your profession your designation the organization that you work in the industry that you are in or your age or any sector you deal into i think we all need to speak powerfully and confidently and public speaking is the most essential skill which is required for any working professional and that's where we decided that why do not we cater to this particular skill through this live webinar that we are going to conduct on behalf of uh, ethica insurance broking i welcome you all once again for this wonderful session i am nancy shah i am a trainer public speaker i also work as an anchor for different corporate social events i host shows so corporate events are like award functions and you'll meet seminars conferences product launches and social events are like haldi mehndi wedding sangeet parties all down the mall you may find me anywhere holding a mic and speaking something okay don't get surprised that's part of my work and yes i get paid for that apart from that i am a corporate trainer i've conducted training programs for various corporates like indian oil corporation or magnemius systems or panasonic and lift and other organizations as well and that's where i am able to empower people to whatever they wish to do in their life i have my own academy on public speaking that is speaker circle and this seminar is brought to you by uh, speaker circle in association with uh, ethica insurance broking private limited so why i am introducing myself like this to tell you that i have explored stages in different ways and forms i've done voice overs i've done some sort of video recordings for different brands so i have tried the camera the live stage the training sessions the programs and every time i come across a different audience different topic different requirement and i have failed miserably so many times and gradually learned this okay so if you feel that nancy it's so easy for you to say it i don't think so i have gone through my ups and downs and i've gone through the same path that probably you are on right now is just that i started a little early and that's why i'm little again uh, in a, in a in a row i am little uh, before you nothing else and if you put the effort which are required i'm sure i guarantee you that you would be able to overcome your stage fear and speak confidently all you need to do is mark your calendar for next five fridays so today is one next four fridays for this session and do not miss any of that and believe me you will get the best out of it okay let me give you the overview of this entire program today we are going to talk about how you can overcome stage fear next friday we are going to talk about content development how you can create good content the afterwards the third session will be on Uh, good delivery how you can present your speech more confidently using your body language voice modulation and overall stage presence session number 4 i am going to teach you the jam technique jam technique is a technique through which you would be able to create any speech within just 10 minutes time okay so that's an entire session and you will also get chance to speak in front of everybody on that day and last day we are going to have 
extend for speeches or impromptu speeches where we will give you topics you will get some time to prepare and you will be presenting your talk in front of everybody this is completely an activity based workshop do not expect me to just speak and you may just listen it is not baba ramdev ki katha okay you are here so you should have a pen and paper if you have the worksheet printed great if not then take a pen and paper and make notes because believe me this is going to help you for a lifetime so are you all excited to begin with this journey type e e e in the chat box if you are excited about this e e okay oh my god i've started getting lot of e's here wonderful wonderful what a energy i really love this vibe and energy from you all okay tell me one thing how many of you are committing to me and this entire team right now that you will attend all the five sessions type 555 in the chat box if you are committing that yes i will attend all the five sessions type 555 in the chat box if you okay somebody is typing four somebody is typing three why i want five i want five okay i want all of you to mark your calendar for entire month of september and ensure that you attend all the sessions okay we have 346 people joining in by now wow isn't this amazing that's a great audience and i'm sure we are going to have great time together uh now let's begin with today's session and that is how you can overcome stage fear so what do you see on the screen right now there's a person who is grabbing the other person to come on the stage and speak right day one today is the day one get up and speak overcoming stage fear and understanding the basics of public speaking that's what we are going to discuss today so before i share anything else let me tell you what happened to me when i went on the stage for the first time let me share with you i'm just stopping my screen for a while so that you can see me properly okay everybody no notes required right now just listen to me i was in first standard when i went on the stage for the first time okay this was at bhavnagar i'm basically born and brought up in gujarat and my school was saint xavier's so in my school we had a tradition of news of the day and quote of the day every day after the assembly so we used to have one boy from one class coming in and sharing news of the day and one girl would come and share the quote of the day this was a usual routine of assembly in my school i used to watch them every day i was just in first standard and this rule was not applicable to students of standard 1 but i was really curious how come they just go on stage and speak something and everybody claps for them i was not interested in public speaking i was interested in getting those claps so i went to my class teacher and say i also want to go on stage and speak something i also want everybody to clap for me my teacher said you're too young would you be able to manage i somehow talked to my mother my mother convinced my class teacher and finally they all agreed that one day i will go to stage and i'll share a quote okay i was all ready my mother wrote a two liner quote in my mother tongue that is gujarati and i memorized it like anything like if you wake me in the middle of the night i would be able to say that two lines completely and then finally the day arrived when i was supposed to go on stage i woke up early i wore a iron uniform and polished shoes and new ribbons and i was all set i was all set to go on the stage and finally i reached to my school that day my father came to drop me to the school and the assembly would start in a while the bell rang usually i used to sit in the front row in the assembly but on that day i sat at last do you know why the answer was very simple i wanted some more time to walk through the line while i go on the stage so i waited and let everybody settle down and then i sat at last and i waited for everybody to settle once that was done so the prayer was started as per the routine then uh, the classes who had their actual turn on that day for news of the day and quote of the day they came and they spoke and then there was a special announcement that kids today we have Nancy from Standard One who will come and share the quote of the day. Can we have a round of applause? And people started clapping. I get up from the line. I got up from my queue and started walking towards the stage. 
looking here and there, waving at my friends. You know, I was so happy. I was so excited. And then I reached nearer the stage. Now, there were three steps to climb the stage. When I took my first step, I started shivering. When I took the second step, I started sweating. And when I took the third step and turned my face in front of those students, well, there were 1,000 students with their 2,000 eyes staring at me. There was a pin drop silence and I forgot my lines. I forgot everything. Why I was there, what I was supposed to do, how I would speak, I had no idea. I was frozen on the stage like a deaf and dumb. And those were the longest 30 seconds of my life. In those days, in our school, we did not have those wireless mics. We had those uh, standees. I hope you have used standees. So those standees were there. So one of the volunteers came by and he had to adjust the height of the standee to match my height because I was very young, a small kid. So he adjusted the height of a standee. And uh, through that, he just looked at me and I looked at him. It was just a fraction of a second we had an eye contact and he could realize that there's something wrong with this child. So he just tapped on my back and said, Nancy, just speak something. I said, I don't remember anything. He said, just speak, speak, go on. I was totally nervous. I had no idea what would I do. I saw my father who was standing at the back, waving at me and signing me, speak, speak, speak. And I totally forgot what to do. So what I did, I just closed my eyes. I folded my hands and I spoke something. I don't know what I speak that day, but I spoke something. And until and unless I could hear the loud noise of claps, I could not dare to open my eyes. But when I opened my eyes, everybody was clapping, everybody was cheering up, everybody was shouting out loud, everybody was really happy. My classmates were waving at me, my principal came by, he also tapped on my back. It was a wonderful experience. When I went downstairs and sat with my friends in the recess time, when everybody asked me, then she was so good. I said, yeah, 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 no big deal. Hello, I can do it like anything, you know. I could not tell them how was how fearful I was when I was there on the stage. You can't tell it to your friends, right? You just created a good impression in front of everybody. And now you can't just go and say, oh, I was so nervous. So I did not tell it to anybody. I faked it. I faked it. And I told everybody, yeah, it was not a big deal for me. I did it like anything, you know. How many of you have done this? Yeah. Well, I did it. And then in my mind, I decided never again. I am not going to go on stage ever, ever, ever again in my life. But still, I'm standing in front of you right now and I'm conducting this webinar. That means I've gone on stage afterwards also. Why? Because I could not spoil the fake image that I created. Everybody in my class felt that I could do it easily. So next time, whenever there was such requirement, they would nominate my name. Every time I would feel that I'll say no this time. I'll say no this time. But could never say no. And because of that, I could continue. Again and again, I had to do it. My legs kept shivering. My heartbeats kept racing. I forgot my line so many times. And I had really traumas the night before. And I felt like not to go to school the next day. But because I could not say no, I continued. And that's where gradually I could overcome my stage fear. Why I'm sharing with you. If you are experiencing any of this, okay? If you are experiencing any of this, it's completely normal. It's completely okay. This all are things that any human being would experience when they go on stage and speak. Do you all agree to this? Why can't we first accept that facing stage fear is a normal thing? It's not something that is wrong with you. In fact, if you have never experienced stage fear, that means there's something wrong with you. And you must see a doctor. If you have ever experienced stage fear, that means you're normal. So what I want you to do, there are two options. One, 
you stop yourself and just leave and never try public speaking and miss all the opportunity in your life which you could actually do well otherwise and second option in spite of all the fears you challenge yourself you prepare yourself you try again and again you fail 10 times and still go for it for 11th time continue with the journey and gradually start enjoying it i have two options for you what would you select option number 1 leave it or option number 2 give it a try one or two i want you to answer in the chat box what is your option what do you want to do option number 1 or 2 hmm option 1 somebody said okay it's okay i I'll, i'll still convince you in some time lot of you are saying to 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 do wow that's great that's great i do not want any of you if you are listening to me right now that means you can't leave public speaking just because of a stage fear it took me few years to get fine with it okay it took me few years to feel i started my journey when i was in first standard and by seventh eighth standard gradually i started feeling more comfortable and when i entered high school i think around that age i started enjoying it and still there are instances see sometimes i'm hosting an event which has really key and important people sitting like recently i hosted an event in delhi where we had shri nitin gadkari sir as a chief guest now having such a amazing person such a honorable person who is part of the government sitting in your audience i was hell nervous i felt like not going to the show but because it was a big opportunity and i was almost prepared with everything i pushed myself and i made it so there is no guarantee you can't completely overcome stage fear you need to actually start getting comfortable with it you can never overcome stage fear some sort of stage fear will always be there in your life and according to me it is required also because if you are not at all nervous you will never prepare i can't just come today and say okay i have conducted this session 100 times so i'll be able to do it like that no i have to go through my ppt i have to prepare worksheet and share it with you and i also have to ensure that i cover the important points which are required even if i have conducted this session so many times everybody needs to prepare and if you are not at all nervous sometimes it is an overcome confidence so first thing that i want to tell you today if you are experiencing stage fear it is completely normal but you do not need to stop yourself because of that but you need to continue practicing preparing and doing it again and again whenever you get an opportunity so that you improvise upon it gradually now before we move further i have a question in your worksheet i hope you have your worksheet with you if you have the worksheet there is first question what are the instances where you need to speak publicly you can type and reply in the chat box also or you can type in your worksheet as well what are the instances where you need to speak publicly kahan kahan pe aapko public speaking ki zarurat padti hai kahan kahan pe aapko actually uska use karna padta hai can you tell me the instances where you need to speak publicly okay presentation group discussion meetings office okay companies networking opportunities meetings office trainings okay leadership roles what else okay parties gatherings celebrations festival celebrations and not only in office i think you all need public speaking in your personal life as well so if i talk about let's say for example there is some family gathering and you need to congratulate somebody and you have to deliver a speech that somebody is getting married and you need to share your good wishes or it is some occasion a social function or probably it's an independence day and you're going to your kid schools and as a parent you are asked to speak something that can also be a possibility so instances are not just professional they are personal also this is a skill okay and if you learn the skills you would be able to use it in both of the ways personally and professionally as well so uh, you do not change when you step into the office and now you are so confident and once you go home you are not confident that never happens 
if you are confident you will be confident in your social gatherings also and in your professional gatherings also so note down the instances where you need to speak publicly so that's the first question second question what are the major challenges that you are facing in this area can you tell me the challenges that you are personally facing in this area what are the challenges that you are facing in, in this area okay i'm waiting for your response you can type in a chat or do not miss out on filling the same answers in your worksheet as well okay communication is a challenge okay opportunities is sometimes you don't get an opportunity to do it okay content development is a challenge english pronunciations is a challenge okay blackout somebody gets blackout somebody has a fear right audience getting right audience is a challenge okay what else okay lack of words lack of words good vocabulary is a challenge listening skill is a challenge confidence is a challenge what else body language is a challenge okay see out of this many things we are going to cover in this five sessions and i'll try my best to justify most of the uh, the things that you have mentioned of course it's a limited time i won't be able to cover every point but if at all you are facing this it's a long journey okay even if you are attending this all five sessions you need to practice it on regular basis and if you don't do that after attending five sessions also you'll not get the result and i'll tell you the ways to practice so don't worry just stay tuned and we'll work upon this challenges together the third question that i have in the worksheet what are the symptoms of stage fear now let me explain what is symptom symptom is what you experience what your body feels let's say for example um if i'm having a headache my headache is a symptom the reason might be different okay but the headache is something that i'm experiencing feeling something that i can actually vouch for right so these are the symptoms what are the symptoms of stage fear that you are experiencing let's say for example you are facing rapid heart beats or your trembling knees or butterflies in stomach all these are symptoms what are the symptoms of stage fear what happens to your body when you are on stage and you are not comfortable tell me that okay stuck in the middle you forget things anxiety okay insecurities nervousness okay sweating shivering or forgetting words not able to frame right sentences stammering okay memory lost bhul gaye kya bolna tha unconscious okay unconscious ho jate ho okay you feel like you'll just faint starting problem not able to start confidently that might be one of the problem what else heavy heartbeat it seems like you have run for 5 kilometers your heart beats are racing like anything okay forgetting what is prepared whatever you have prepared you are just forgetting so forgetting words all this are symptoms of stage fear and as i said if you are experiencing any of them it's completely fine can we write um okay we okay what else okay playing with hair how many of you have noticed somebody playing with hair or, or playing with things be it a watch or be it a ring or be it a pen tick tick tick, tick shuru rehta hai i think most of us have done it we are can't able to smile not able to have good smile on face repeating words unnecessary repetition yes that is also one of the symptom eye contact i uh, you would be able to look here and there but not in front of an audience and that's okay one of the symptom of stage fear mumbling you are not able to speak confidently with a clear voice you are almost mumbling hands in pockets yes lot of people do not use their hands confidently on stage and they just put it in the pocket okay 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 stop 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 i think we have all discussed various symptoms of stage fear you can note them down in your worksheet if you have a print out with you or in your notepad and pen 
uh, why I'm sharing this? Because this is something that you will continue experiencing for a lifetime. You will say, Nancy, apne session ka title diya tha, overcoming stage fear. And now you are coming over here and telling us that you won't be able to overcome stage fear. How this would work? Well, let me be very honest with you. Once again, I'm clarifying. You can reduce stage fear. You can never make it zero. You can reduce stage fear. You will gradually get comfortable with it. But you will never make it zero. And I don't want you to make it zero. Let it be there. That, that We are human beings and not machines, right? Even machines have errors. Then as a human being, why do we expect ourselves to be flawless? Even, okay. Now, let me ask you one more thing. What are the reasons of stage fear? Why do we experience stage fear? What are the reasons of stage fear? Any idea? These all are symptoms. Let's say, for example, if I'm having a headache, that's a symptom. But why I'm having a headache? That's a reason. Let's say, for example, my glasses have increased, the number of my glasses have increased, or probably I have a problem with sinus, or probably I did not have a good night's sleep yesterday night, and that's why I'm having a headache, or probably I had a jet lag. The reasons are different from the symptoms. I want to know the reasons now. The, and this is also one of the questions in your worksheet. Question number four, what are the reasons of stage fear? Why do we experience stage fear at the first place? Lack of experience, yes, that is one of the reasons. I'll address it one by one. So, yes, we all experience fear in doing anything when we do not have much experience into it. And that's quite genuine. And that's quite normal. That's quite okay, right? But if you would never try, how will you have an experience? To build an experience, you first have to give it a try, right? So ensure that you do not stop yourself because of lack of experience. Even if you do not know anything, if you have not done anything till date, you should give it a try because someday you would be able to learn through that experience and present better the next time. So lack of experience should not be the answer. Okay, you should not stop yourself because of that. Pressure of performance. Wow, that's an actual answer. I was expecting this and you said it correctly. When you want to perform really at your best, when you want to do something really nicely, you know, you feel performance pressure. Yes, because what happens? Because you don't want to make any mistakes, you put so much pressure on yourself that eventually you make more mistakes. Have you ever experienced this? I have made it, I've experienced this many times. Whenever I try to be perfect, I make more mistakes. Okay, let me ask you one thing. I have been talking here for almost 45 minutes now, okay? I don't think that I did not have any mistakes. Probably I shuffled up myself here, there a little. I adjust my camera like this a little. Or probably I would have made some grammatical errors. I don't know. I am a trainer and I'm a speaker. But that does not mean that I can never make mistakes. I might have made some grammatical errors. But are you here to count on my grammatical errors? Yes, no, maybe. I am sure definitely not. Then, does it matter to you? I don't deny the importance of working upon a language, okay? Please take it in the right way. What I'm saying is, you can always improvise upon your language. You can always improvise upon your English grammar. You can always improvise upon yourself in any area you feel like. But you should not feel pressurized because of it. Your audience is coming there to listen to you and not to check your grammatical errors. I repeat. Your audience is coming there to listen to you and not to count your filler words or repetitive words or your grammatical error. They are coming to you for a message that you want to pass on. And if you are able to speak properly and pass on your message, some prop minute errors here and there or some mistakes here and there should not be a problem. Do you all agree to this? Type AAA in the chat box if you agree to this. And you should not focus on, you should not focus on anything else but your preparation. And if you do that, 
you would be able to speak in a better way. The lesser the performance pressure, the better the performance. Oh my God, a lot of people are responding to this. So even if you do not have much experience, even if you have to perform at a nice way, still do not put a burden on yourself. Otherwise, you'll make more mistakes. And if at all, you make some mistakes here and there, it's okay. See, if I expect myself to be the best, or if I tell you that I'm the best speaker in the world, then I'm not allowed to make any mistakes. But if I tell you, see boss, I am also a learner, okay? I have tried this so many times and definitely I know this and I have something important to share with you. But it's okay if I also make some mistakes because I'm also on my way to become better. When I present myself this way, I really don't think so that somebody would take it in the wrong way. People would accept you the way you are, with the ability you have, with the knowledge that you want to share. You just need to present yourself confidently. So I do not want anybody from this session right now to ever feel hesitant because of lack of anything, any skill, ability, language, anything. I do not want you to feel hesitant about it. It's okay if you make few mistakes. It's okay if there are few here, errors here and there. If you're confident enough, you would be able to manage it. Okay? Can you give me a thumbs up on this? I want a thumbs up from everybody. Give me a thumbs up in the chat box if you commit that you would not doubt your abilities and skills at any cost. That's not allowed at all. Oh my God, I've started getting a lot of responses from people. Wonderful. One thing that I love about this webinar is the response that I'm getting from all of you. I'm really obliged and I'm really grateful for such an active participation. I'm really happy to look at your responses. Okay. What are the other reasons of stage fear? Uh, being an introvert. Oh, who said that? Uh, there is one person who has mentioned here, because I'm an introvert, I do not think that I would be able to speak confidently. I don't think so. That's that's a lie. That's, a, that's not the truth, okay? That's just an excuse, by the way. Even I have seen a lot of introvert people talking so confidently. See, you do not need to always be an extrovert. To, to See, I am an extrovert by nature, okay? I can't change that. You are an introvert by nature. And I don't think you need to change that. Be an introvert. What do you mean by an introvert? The person who enjoys the self-company more than anything else, that's an introvert and that's completely fine. You be an introvert for a lifetime. Just speak whenever required. You need to just speak whenever required. Because you are an introvert, you should not stop yourself from public speaking. Because you are an introvert, I don't think you should be hesitant to talk on stage. Never. Be introvert. Embrace the feelings and emotions that you have. It's completely fine. You do not need to change yourself a single bit. Be that for a lifetime. But, where you need to say well, you should be able to talk. If you can just manage that, it's good to go. So being an introvert, I don't think is a valid reason for having stage fear. Okay, not prepared. Who said that? My goodness. That's an actual reason of stage fear. That's an actual reason of stage fear. Let me ask you something. Recall two incidences of your life, okay? Recall two incidences of your life. One incident, everybody, are you with me? Recall two incidences of your life. One incident where you were very confident and you did something amazingly. It was a speech, presentation, viva, or somebody asked you to perform at some stage or there was some requirement, something. It might be a sport or a cultural competition or it might be your exams. I hope you could do something really nicely at least once in a lifetime. I hope you're able to remember one incident Type 11111 if you have got that incident in your mind. How many of you got a beautiful incident of yourself where you could do something really well, you, where you were really confident, where you could perform really well? How many of you could identify that? Okay, I have getting a lot of responses. 111 in the chat box if you could find that. Okay, fine. A lot of you have found the incident number one. Now, park it aside for a while and let's think about an incident number 
two of your life, the second incident of your life, where you could not perform well, where it was not a nice show, you were really nervous, even you didn't like your performance and others also did not like it and people gave you a critical feedback also. Have you ever, ever experienced something like this? I'm sure we all would have. Like I've also had such experiences. Type 222 two in the chat box if you can recall the second incident of your life where you could not perform successfully. It might be a speech, assignment, viva, presentation, any competition or a social gathering where you were supposed to do something and you could not do it nicely and you got a critical feedback. If you could find the second incident of your life like that, type 2 in the chat box quickly. Okay? I think most of you have got the second incident also. Fine. So now, okay, stop typing. I, I've got it. I, I got it that you have got the second incident also. Now just pause for a while and let's compare both of these incidences. Let's compare both of these incidences. Okay? In one, you were very confident. In other one, you were not so confident and you were nervous. In one, you could perform really well. In the other one, you could not perform really well. In one, everybody appreciated your work. In the other one, nobody appreciated. In fact, you got a critical feedback. What is the difference between these two? Well, why they were different? You are the same person. How can it be that you are confident in one situation and not so confident in one situation? The answer is very simple. In one, you were prepared. In the second one, you were not prepared. When you exactly know, listen to me carefully, when you exactly know what you are supposed to do and how, you'll naturally feel confident. And when you do not know what you're supposed to do and how, you will feel nervous. How do you get confidence? You get confidence through preparation. There is no other way. Bold italic underline. There is no other way to gain confidence other than preparation. If you know what you're supposed to do, you'll naturally feel confident about it. And if you do not know what you're supposed to do, you'll feel nervous. How many of you agree to this statement? Type agree or A, 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 A in the chat box if you agree to this. I'm looking at your responses right now. Oh my God, it is flooding up with a lot of responses and we still have more than 338 people in this room right now. Wow, that's an amazing participation. So, what is my way to help you overcome your stage fear? Focus on your preparation and leave everything else. If you could do it at that time, you will be able to do it now. And if you compare the both of the incidents of your life, number one and number two, I'm sure that only preparation would be the difference between two. Yes. And that's the actual factor. Okay. So, how do we get confidence? Do we get any medication, any prescription available from any doctor? That if you follow this prescription for three months, you would be able to over overcome your stage fear? Hmm? Do we get anything like that? <laughs> On a lighter note, I'm just asking this question. But yes, do we, do we get any prescription to follow for three months to overcome stage fear? No. There is no such prescription available, right? Then how do you get it? It comes from within. It comes from within. And you feel it when you're ready for it. So the next question, how can we overcome stage fear? How can we overcome stage fear? Let me share with you. The first one, accept nervousness. That's what I have been talking about since we have begun this session. You need to accept that nervousness is normal. Do not expect yourself to be confident always. It's okay if your legs are shivering. If it's okay if you are facing some challenges. It's okay if you're not perfect. Do not expect perfection for yourself. Accept that you're going to make some mistakes. Accept that even if you do great, not everybody will be happy. Accept that 
you you will eventually make some mistakes except that nervousness is part of life okay that's the first thing because until and unless you accept something you can never correct it so acceptance is the first step and then you go further so first accept that facing this all feelings and having stage fear is completely normal second prepare 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 as much as you can prepare your notes go through your content research your data statistics dry run karo give a small presentation in terms of your office groups or crowd before giving a final talk prepare your, your cue cards lot of things there are different ways to prepare for yourself in front of your family members friends practice because that's the only way to gain confidence somebody has said it really nicely that if you fail to prepare you are all prepared to fail i repeat if you fail to prepare you are all prepared to fail isn't it amazing so if you don't want to fail you need to prepare and practice so practice and prepare as much as you can and believe me it would not work completely fine in a first go okay so calm yourself down take some deep breaths before you go on stage relax your mind and believe in your abilities and last but not the least fake it till you make it this is what i can actually give you fake it till you make it this is a mantra that you need to always remember tell me one thing all these great speakers are born with public speaking skills yes no maybe type in a chat box all these great speakers then the, the ones who we see on ted talks and josh talks and on the tv channels and on the award shows are this all born speakers were they so confident from the day one hmm what do you think yes no maybe well no 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 that means they were not born speakers everybody has learned it gradually by falling getting up again trying it out again falling again getting up again trying out again falling again getting up again trying out again that's the only process so if we did not try we would be able never be able to learn it. and if you observe them minutely even the greatest speakers also have some flaws if you evaluate their speeches they will oh, sorry they will also sometimes have some repetitive words some fillers some unnecessary pauses but we do not consider them because we focus more on their message but i'm sure they also feel nervous okay let me give you the latest example recently we had oscar 2023 have anybody watched the video of dipika padukone introducing natu natu me 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 type me in the chat box if you have watched the video of dipika padukone introducing natu natu to alles dekho dipika ka naam aaya to response bad gaya yaar so many people have started responding just because it was dipika padukone hmm okay so dipika padukone introduced natu natu from the film rrr at oscars 2023 this year and she was really good yes who said that she was really great but do you know the behind the scenes i watched one of the interview of dipika just before the oscar announcement so before she was going on the stage one reporter was talking to her and she asked her how are you feeling and she said you know what i am nervous dipika padukone said in front of a live camera before announcing not not to at oscar she said that i'm feeling nervous because we do not get into oscar every single day like since we are child we we thought and dreamt about being on a oscar stage and today i'm getting on there it's a totally different feeling and i'm actually so i'm nervous and i'm excited both together that's what she said that means that even the great speakers also experience nervousness imagine if you and me are asked to stand on a stage like oscars and announce a movie like this or a song like this 
I'll also feel nervous. You will also feel nervous. That's okay. So, but when you see Deepika talking in front of people on the Oscar stage, you do not feel that she was nervous. She, she, uh, she was really confident. She was really good. And she did it really nicely. And everybody across the world appreciated her. But the reality in her mind, she was nervous. So what she was doing? She hide her nervousness behind her smile. And that's what we are supposed to do. Fake it till you make it. Hide your nervousness behind your smile. I think the movie, how many of you have watched the movie Three Idiots? Type me, me, me or yes, yes, yes on in the chat box if you have watched the movie Three Idiots. I think most of you have watched the movie Three Idiots. Definitely. Do you remember Rancho, the character who played the role of Punsuk Wangadu in the movie? Now, that particular character had this slogan, all is well. And that would work definitely for you. Fake it till you make it. Even if you're not feeling good, even if you do not feel confident, even if you have rapid heartbeats, even if you forget your lines, always remember. <coughs> Keep smiling and hide your nervousness behind your smile. So let's say, for example, if I say, okay, Nancy, just last five minutes to go, you've done a great job. It has been a wonderful seminar. It's okay if you're nervous right now. That's fine. Just last five minutes and you'll be sorted. Keep smiling and continue with what you're supposed to do. Your audience will never get to know that you're feeling nervous. You won't believe us. I was also a little nervous before this session because this is the first session of this entire series. And I think this uh, organization, Ethica Insurance Broking, is trying an online workshop of five sessions in the same month on a single topic for the first time. So it was something new for them, something new for me also. So I think I was a little nervous. But I don't think you could get it because I hide it behind my smile. So no matter what you're feeling, tell your heart all is well and keep a good smile on face. Prepare yourself well. Go ahead and speak what you're supposed to. No matter how good or bad you do it, there's always a next time. According to one quote that I heard, one wonderful person said this. There are always three speeches that you deliver. Okay, there are always three speeches. One that you prepared. Second one that you delivered. And third one, the, that is your wish that you could have delivered. So it is never going to be perfect and that's okay. But if you have ability and willingness to try again and again, gradually you'll get a neck over it. Do you all agree to this? Give me a big thumbs up if you agree to this. You can never overcome stage fear. All you can do is reduce it. Practice, prepare, work upon yourself and be fine with no matter what happens to you. Keep going, keep practicing, keep continuing. Fake it till you make it and I'm sure gradually you will find your way. There are a lot of other more lessons that I want to teach you. In the next session, we are going to talk about content development. Why content development is important? Because even if you are so confident, but if you do not have something meaningful to say, there is no point. So your content is the key. And how to develop good content is something that we are going to discuss in the next session. So how many of you are committing to yourself to be part of it? Okay. So we have uh, launched a poll for the feedback for today's session. I'm looking forward to your responses right now. The feedback poll is here. So overall, how was the session? Excellent, good, average, poor. You can quickly give your feedback so that we can consider it and try to improvise it for the next time. I am looking forward to get feedback from everybody. There are 313 people in this room right now and I want everybody to give feedback. Okay, by this time, very less people have given feedback. Can we have a thumbs up and feedback from everybody? Whatever it is, okay? Is, we are not going to judge what you are going to say because we don't know who said what. But your feedback is important to us because that would help us improvise. 
by yeah. this time only 36% participants have given feedback can we have feedback for everybody i think if i conduct a session like this for one hour at least i deserve a feedback can you please punch in your feedbacks just in a 30 seconds in next 30 seconds we'll close the poll just 30 seconds so to give the are, feedback so sorry to interrupt nancy so as we are at the end of the session so we would like to uh, i request everyone to participate in the feedback poll which is still live on your screen and if you have any questions to ask, please raise your hand so that I can move to you on the panelist and you can directly have a word with Nancy or else you can type your question in a Q&A section also uh, wherein we can answer it live. So you have any questions, please raise your hand. So we have two hands raised. So I'll give you the permission to move to the panelist. Please come on the panelist, unmute yourself and speak. Yeah, we, so have, we have next 10 Satyam minutes. Meena. Yeah. So, uh, Mr. Satyam, you can just uh, unmute yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, Nancy. Hello, Satyam. How are you? Yeah, I am fine. Like the session was really good, but I have few things that I want to ask you. Please. Uh, one, uh, one thing is that like whenever we go in a stage, right? So obviously we are very nervous in that. So maybe something like uh, we'll get from here. Like I know that like last, uh, like uh, all future session, I will definitely want to attend that. So I just want to know like, uh, there is like some, I just want to know mostly the career things, right? Like area of the expertise, the benefit, like when we go towards the public speaking, like I just want to take like how the career we can develop, like you, right? You're just like, I just went through your profiles on LinkedIn as well. And like before joining the session. So I said like, uh, just how you are participating since most of the companies like you mentioned, right? Mm -hmm. So like area how to develop a, how to develop a career in public speaking that's, that's what you're asking right okay yeah okay let me answer your question so what are the different career options that you have as a uh, if you have a good public speaking skills so you can become a public speaker motivational speaker trainer coach or you can become a counselor consultant or uh, other than that you can do good into sales and marketing also if you are a good if you have good speaking skills apart from that uh, you can be a voiceover artist or rj or you can be an anchor like me or probably a trainer also there are a lot of options first identify what do you want to tap into okay i might be good as a public speaker and an anchor i might not be able to do sales in a right way because i've never done sales in my life but if that is your niche, you should identify first what area you want to tap into. Second, look for opportunities in that area. When I decided that I want to work as an anchor, I did not have anybody to tell me, okay, do this, do that. Or there was no academy or there was no formal education on this. So how I did it, I started working. I started meeting people. I started uh, identifying opportunities in that area. And... Uh, there's a beautiful saying uh, where we say work teaches you how to work. You, so you start working and gradually you gain an experience because most of the fields that I just mentioned do not have a formal education. You're not trained professionally for anchoring. You're not trained professionally for voiceovers. So now gradually in metro cities, we have started getting those uh, private institutes who offer such coaching or something. But generally we do not have and there's no certification also. Nobody can certify that you are the best anchor in the world. There's nothing like that, right? So you start working, you gain experience, you learn through your experience, you improvise upon yourself, become better, and eventually develop a career into that. So identify what exactly you want to do and look for opportunities. Maybe it's so small. So probably if, let's say, for example, I am an anchor, so hosting a small birthday party or a family function or community gathering or event at your office and then gradually building yourself into that area. Small steps towards your dream will take you a long way. I hope I've answered your question. Yes, yes, I got it. Thank you. Do we have any other questions? Yeah, we have uh, two questions under the Q&A section. So here, uh, Mr. Maniraj is asking like how uh, to improve vocabulary. Okay. So and vocabulary, okay, we'll take it one by one. So learning a vocabulary or learning a language rather, I'll take it in a broader perspective. 
And when you say vocabulary, I'm sure you're talking about English as a language because that's an international language. And most of us do not have our first language as English. It's our second or third language probably. And that's where we face challenges because we are not native speakers and we lack in terms of vocab or words or sentence formation or some grammar and a lot of other things. Now, learning all this is a lifelong journey. I would suggest you three things that you should do every day. Okay. First, read something in English for 15 minutes, not more than that. 10 to 15 minutes of reading. You may read novels, newspapers, books. You may read your subject related things, some technical stuff, anything that you find suitable. I would not ask you to go to some XYZ website and learn the word of the day because that word of the day you are never going to use in your life. That's not going to help you. So do not look, memorize words. That's not going to help you. What you need to do is read something every day, underline words that are new to you that you could not understand. Okay. Because they came across you, that means they are relevant to you. Okay, because you came across, you will only read something that is interest to you or probably that is related to your work. So while reading that, if you came across some words which were not comfortable or which were new to you, underline those words. Even if you are not able to understand some words, you would be able to read and you would be able to understand the meaning of the passage. That's fine. But those underlined words, second step, in the evening, when you're sitting aside, you go through the same words again, look for them in the dictionary and make your notes. You may do it virtually, digitally, or probably you can write with a pen and paper. We used to write in a pen and paper, okay? So I had my vocab book where I write a new word, its meaning, its adjectives or nouns or pronouns or whatever associated with it. At the same time, we will also write one sentence which will be uh, created using that particular word. And through that, I prepared my own vocab book, which has all the new words that I learned within last one month. And I'll take my self-dictation test or probably I'll review it at least once in a week or something so that I can gradually memorize it. And then third step, start using those words into your day-to-day -day life. So let's say, for example, you need to say something, you need to speak somewhere, start using those words and gradually it would become a habit. So very simple process to improve vocab. Read something, step one, read something for 15 minutes. Step two, highlight the words that are important and new to you. Make notes, create your separate vocab book with the help of that. Third, review it, take your dictation and uh, repeat them and try using them in your daily presentations and talks through which you will actually improve upon your vocabulary. I hope uh, this justifies your question. One more question that we have is what if people are getting bored of us if they are not interested in our points? Okay. How many of you were actually interested in this topic? Somebody was 70% uh, interested. Somebody was 100% interested. Somebody was 20-30% uh, interested. I also had a mixed crowd. Like we had more than... 300 people in this room right uh, like throughout the session so not necessarily that everybody is interested 100 percent not necessarily that everybody is interested in public speaking the way i am okay you will never get 100 percent audience interested with you in your topic 100 percent that's never possible that's just a hypothetical situation if i cannot imagine and ex expect that all of you all 300 plus people have to be 100% interested in what I'm saying. That's not possible. See, people have a lot of things in their life to think of. So while you are attending this session, somebody is worried, today is a Friday evening, let me just finish off and go home from tomorrow, my vacation starts. Somebody is worried what to do in the weekend. Somebody is worried, even if it's weekend, you still need to stretch and complete some tasks that you have not done in the week, whatever. Everybody has so many things to think in life that even if I want you to be with me throughout the session, that's not possible. So don't expect, number one, don't expect your audience to be 100% interested ever in your whatever topic that you're talking about. Then what to do about it? Try involving them. Try engaging them. Do not come up and say something that they already know. If you bring something new to the table, they would be interested for sure. 
that's number one so you need to prepare and present and prepare your talk and develop your content in a manner that you bring something new to the table number one number two try engaging them so i have i don't have the count but uh, only ekta would be able to say that we have i think more than 1000 messages in the chat box throughout this one hour definitely hmm? now why that was required why it was required for me to ask you so many question and ask you to type e e e and y y y y y in the chat box that was my way to engage with you connect with you i'm not able to look at your faces i really don't know where you are working i really don't know your background what you're doing currently some of you might be attending session along with doing some other work probably i don't know so if i ask you questions if i engage you if i connect with you if i talk about something that becomes easier for you to connect with me and bring your interest more into today's session so always do some activities engage your audience connect with them so that you can grab their attention and develop that interest don't expect that they are 100% interested they are not so we okay, have let's uh... Yeah. Other four questions also. So there is one. Uh, I have three. Okay, four year old son who has a strange friend. So how can I help him to overcome it? Four year old son having a stage fear, darling. That's completely normal. Let your child be alive. Do not judge him based on that. First number one. He's at a very young age. and i know uh, why you are saying this because kids these days are very proactive and you know they do all these things at age 4 also so i understand what you are asking but only one way do not pressurize do not push ask him to take a small opportunity so why you are having a dinner okay ask him to talk about uh, what if you become a prime minister of our country what would you do okay or ask him a question let's say if you want to build a toy which toy you would build and why ask him some questions start interacting you can't expect him to prepare and speak confidently like me and you that's not his age right but probably asking some minute silly small questions and helping him respond properly would be gradually leading him to develop his confidence approve what he is saying support him when he says listen to him patiently when he is talking and if he is not able to speak much help him prepare you speak one sentence help him repeat you speak one sentence and help him repeat four year old is a really young age and do not expect your child to be very confident okay it's fine if he is nervous if i it's fine if he is fumbling it's fine if he is not able to speak properly that's fine that's okay give him some time gradually but keep practicing asking question let him respond ask him explain so we recently went to a club okay so how was your experience what did you like about it whatever you are doing in your daily life talk about that with him spend one hour in your day talk with your child and help him respond to your questions and you listen to it carefully and respond to him help him improvise i think that would be a great thing to be done right now nothing more than that because i think he is not at a age where we can actually uh, push him towards public speaking right now. i hope you understand and take it in a right way so we have one more question like if i prepare well also i am forgetting everything when i go on stage how to solve it there is one simple way out there is one simple way out because see have you ever watched any award show talk show or reality show and there are some anchors you know who use uh, those cards so let's say for example if you are watching an indian idol and there is an anchor who is hosting that entire show live on tv and they are hosting a card in their hand on the back of the card they have written indian idol here but in the front they have not written indian idol there are some points nobody expects you to remember and memorize everything you can always refer to points okay you need to speak confidently and clearly you do not need to rattafy everything and memorize and cram it up and just speak without any reference material not required if you are using a powerpoint presentation that is your reference material that is your cue card but if you are not using ppt you can carry a printed cue cards or probably handwritten cue cards with you on stage 
so that even if you forget you have something to refer i think ekta we have shared some links of the videos with you which we want to share after every session so i think ekta will send you an email you will get it on your email id or probably uh, the way you have got details of this session uh, there we will share one video on how to create cue cards okay how to create cue cards uh, go through that video i'll check ekta if i have sent to that link or not if yes sure. then definitely we will share and but just that's a 4 minute video just watch it on youtube you will exactly know what to be done so you can carry those cue cards along with you on stage so that you are not afraid of missing on something and even if you do you have something to refer to so that it does not make you nervous eventually you are going to forget something for sure okay so you should have cue cards as a resource number 1 and resource number 2 your audience does not have your script if you forgot one thing say the second thing and continue if you forgot something say the second thing if you forgot some words say the same thing in a different way always remember your audience does not have your script if you keep going your audience will never get to know that you forgot something but of course do not forget important data statistics and names of people okay and that's why you need to carry cue card along with you so preparing and using cue card will help you manage yourself on stage when you forget something i hope this helps we'll share the link of the video with you through an email have a look so there are many questions coming in now so uh, i would request like we could uh, just answer uh, the this questions in the next session so there are the other sure. four sessions which are going on and on the public yes. speaking and there will be more content sharing and everything will be done so uh, please uh, ask all your collated questions in the next session so please do attend our next session and uh, i would like to if you have any specific question you can uh, you can just mail us so that we will be tracking those questions as well and we'll try to accommodate as many questions that you have under the next session so and uh, one thing uh, sorry to cut you here ekta Uh, it will not be possible for us to share emails with you however we have shared link of a document with you we will keep updating this document we will post the relevant uh, worksheets for upcoming sessions also links also for the youtube uh, videos also please do keep checking save this link and keep checking this link for updates Yes, so we have a standardized process for all the sessions at Ethica Insurance Broking, and we'll we'll definitely continue to share things with you. You need to keep checking this link, and we'll follow the standard format. If you still have any questions, you can reach out to Ekta, and uh, they will be able to help you with. It. Yeah. So on behalf of everyone, I would like to take this opportunity to thank you for a, such a wonderful uh, session and the insights that you have shared. it's definitely uh, i'm going to implement some of the points i have noted some of the strategies so uh, it will this is a bonus good. for you ha huh, ekta you get to yes. speak to all the speakers you get to learn from everybody yes so that's a very good part of my job <laughs> <laughs> that's nice that's nice but i hope you guys enjoyed the session i had a really great time and i'm looking forward to see you all in the next session next friday sharp at 3:30 where we are going to talk about content development yeah so thank you everyone oh even the participation for your active engagement so your pres your presence has made this webinar a meaningful experience so uh, let us uh, have this opportunity to meet uh, very next week or next friday and um, and let's have the further journey of uh, having a public speaking master course so so by the end of the september i think we will have many of the masters yes looking forward to it we have planned everything for you all we need is your participation and commitment towards this entire series of public speaking we are trying find something like this first time do write to us if you have any feedback positive or suggestions as well we would surely like to definitely try and improvise upon what we have done. so i just okay. try, uh, yeah i just tried uh, the impromptu speech now <laughs> <laughs> that was great you are amazing already darling it was really nice 
and Thanks. anyone who would want to come uh, on screen and share a feedback how was today's session it will be really really helpful so anybody wants us to move them to the panel so that they can let us know what part of the session would they enjoy anybody okay, that that's a really nice idea okay we have a lot of people raising hands but no questions right now we do not have much time for questions today and uh, no long feedbacks also a small quick feedback if you would like to share do let us know exciting we can move some people yeah. to the panel so we have satyam again yeah satyam yeah like hi nancy like in a starting to last that thing that you covered it's really matter like you started like your journey right the first time you went on stage the same feeling like we felt it and we realized like that's happened like it's like how you cover related viva things and mostly uh you can see like some uh like i feel i felt that something like in my interview as well mostly like something like uh, party and maybe like college functions that all thing i felt it so that part i like and apart from that the like ppt you prepare some like starting some cartoons that's like that any animation that you are showing animation yeah. And also, like your voice is very catchy, so that is everything we are getting. Like that's we are, we are enjoying. So that's all from my side. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Sathya. I'm happy that you enjoyed the session. Hello. Okay, one by one, let's have Brahmani first. Yeah. Thank you, Nancy. Actually, uh, say in the previous sessions, what we heard, like it's a one-way communication. Like, see how you are interacting with the people, uh, and you are asking the questions plays a major role. Like how whether people are showing interest on or not. Say you given a good chance for us, and uh, even uh, we have enough knowledge to speak on the stage, but because of you said like nervousness and many things. so all those things even everybody is facing that's the common thing but how you we overcome and how we need to explore all those things you given a good knowledge and good insights that will help us a lot thank you for giving uh, such a great things and share with us it's helps a lot thank you nancy thanks wonderful that was amazing feedback thanks for joining in and looking forward to have you in the next sessions too sure 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 will we have mahender also here hi mahender hi nancy thank you thank you for this session it was a really wonderful session and we uh, i really enjoyed it the uh, the most uh, part is that you speak confidently means uh, you improvise the listeners that anyone want to speak at stage or in the gatherings or in the meetings they need to speak confidently whether it's wrong or right it's not the matter the speaking is matter first yes second is okay there is some mistakes maybe a grammatical mistake or some uh, some pronunciation mistakes but which we can improve gradually this is the right thing mm. thank you thank you for this session and we really looking forward to more sessions like this more power to you thank you so much for joining in i'm looking forward to have you in the next session and many more speeches from you gradually as well all the thank best. you thank you Yes, Ekta. I think yeah. uh, we have covered everyone. Yes, yes, yes. You're thank welcome. You, Thanks for having me here. Me. <laughs> and I thank uh, Ethika Insurance Broking for clicking on this idea and planning it in this way. I'm sure the next four sessions are also going to be great, and we'll have a great time together because believing into something totally new, which you have never uh, uh, sort of experimented yet, uh, was a big deal. And thanks for the trust that you have shown in me. so the credit goes to you also nancy because you were the change maker and you gave us a road map we can go about like this and that so the credit goes to you on wonderful session i see the energy in today's session i see the comments i see the chats i see people calling in also ekta while the session is going on that session oh, wow. is wonderful my so and so employee is not able to join so it's really really great response so i'm looking forward to the next week session as well great insights sure. let's catch up again yeah thank you so much have a beautiful weekend ahead same to you have a nice day thank Bye. you Take everyone care.